accomplish it. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together this evening, this Wednesday night revival. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus to give him praise and glory tonight. I'm sure there'll be more that will help us fill in the, the house of God tonight. But let's just lift our hands and just worship him and invite his presence here. Lord, we love you tonight. We give this service to you, God, in the middle of our week tonight. We've come to worship you, to lift up your name, God, to have fellowship with you. We pray that your presence, God, would just fill this house today. Let your anointing, God, rest on everything that is said and done. Let us be sensitive to the moving and the flow of the Holy Ghost in this service. We just pray, God, that your will will be done in this service and in every heart and life. And we ask it tonight in Jesus' name. Oh, let's just worship him a moment. Hallelujah. Just open your mouth and give him praise right now. We love you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory tonight. We've come to worship you. We've come to worship you, to give you praise and honor this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We exalt your name, oh God, tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's worship God. Amen. As our worship team takes us into the presence of God tonight. Oh 
hands to Jesus in this house. Hallelujah. Are y'all thankful to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Why don't you just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we come to praise you tonight, God. We come to lift you up, Jesus. Let's sing this next song together. When all I see is a battle, you see my victory.
to the Lord in this house. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord!
praise and glory. We give you all the honor, hallelujah, all the worship, all the glory tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. We have several that have called and asked us to pray. Sister Lucy lost her father this week. She's at the wake service right now. And she a message and asked if we would pray. So many others have reached out and asked for prayer. If you're in the room tonight and you just have a special need, why don't you just slip your hand up? God knows what it is. Yeah. Amen. Let's let's pray together right now. Father, we thank you for your presence that's in this house right now. God, we pray for Lucy and their family. God, that you would give them comfort and strength as she buries her father, Lord, in the coming days. Lord, that you would just be with them, Lord, and use this time to just speak to them and draw close to them. Every need, oh God, that's been called in and messaged in. <clears throat> Father, every uplifted hand, we place God in your hands right now. And we pray that you would move in every circumstance in life tonight, every struggle, every trial, every mountain, God, every, every valley. Lord, whatever it is your people are going through tonight, we just place in your hand. And we pray, God, that you would move and your divine will would be accomplished in their lives tonight. We give you our struggles this evening. We give you our battles. We give you the things that are weighing us down. We lay our burdens at your feet. We come boldly tonight into the throne room, Lord, and we find help. We find help here tonight in your presence. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said, in Jesus' name. Oh, one more time, let's clap our hands to the Lord, for He alone is worthy. We're going to sing it again a couple more times. I'm going to get the ushers to bring the offering plates right now. Amen, Brother Ted, if we can get the offering plates. Praise the Lord, we're going to march around with our tithes and offerings this evening. Sister Diane will be at the back. If you want to get my debit or credit card, she'll help you in the back. You can give online by going to... The the believerschurch.ca top tap on uh, online giving or download the tithe lee app amen god bless you as you give amen and worship the lord with your giving tonight to be praised tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, we're in his presence tonight, aren't we? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Greetings out there who's ever listening by internet and greetings to everybody that's here tonight. If you're new, please, please fill out a connect card. Uh, you can find one out at the hospitality desk. If you haven't already filled one out, we really want you to do that. It's important to us. Connecting is what we do at Believer's Church. The picnic, the family picnic, is going to be August the 13th. We bring this up every time I read the bulletin because it's important. It's fellowship again. It's family. It's friends. It's neighbors. Bring whoever you want. We want to celebrate. 
God's kingdom together. Amen. And that picnic is August the 13th. It is from 2 to 6. There's going to be bouncy houses for the children, which is very nice. Two of them, I hear. And also, if you are going, it is important, again, that you fill out, put your name out at the hospitality desk. There's a form out there, a sheet to fill out so we can get a head count, get some kind of idea how much we need to bring hot dogs, hamburgers, whatever it is. Also, if you're uh, thinking of bringing something yourself to share with the uh, group, uh, whether that's pop or salads or whatever, there's a form out there for that too. If you put your name down and say what you're bringing, we would appreciate that. Ladies' night. Well, we're going to get out, girls. Open the doors. <laughs> we're ready. It's going to be this Friday at 5 o'clock. I think we all have our names down. I don't think there's too many uh, names that aren't there. I've got a count of 30 women right now. And uh, I've invited everybody to the house for dessert, and you're more than welcome. Uh, I don't have a big house, but we're going to make it work, aren't we? Amen. And uh, I'm praying, and I prayed to I prayed so hard this morning, to the Lord. I said, Lord, let it rain. Let it pour down rain. And look what he gave me today. And I'm asking the same for tomorrow so the sun will shine for us on Friday night so we can be outside. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So if you can bring a chair, a lawn chair with you, I'd appreciate that. That's if the sun is shining. If it isn't, don't bother. We'll find seats inside. <laughs> so amen, amen. Prayer meeting Saturday night. Mm-mm. We know how important that is. The prayers of a righteous man or woman, woman avails much in the kingdom of God. He hears our prayers. He answers our prayers. We're given that power by the Holy Spirit. He tells us that we, we have that power. S miracle signs and wonders. We see them here every Sunday. Even, even tonight, you'll probably see a miracle here, right in front of you, because God is in this place. God is in this place. Glory to God. I don't know how anybody can sit home and not come on a Wednesday, a Sunday, to enjoy the presence of God and see miracle signs and wonders. I, I don't understand. But whatever, people, we all have a choice, don't we? Tonight, we have Pastor bringing a wonderful message, I'm sure. I don't know what he's naming that, but I can assure you, you will be blessed. And God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you glad to be in church tonight? Feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. We welcome you here. We're so glad that you're in, in the house of God with us tonight. We sing a song every once in a while, No Place I'd Rather Be Than Here in Your Love. And uh, there's no place I'd rather be tonight than with the family of God. I said this last Wednesday night, but I say it tonight. Amen. I'm with my favorite people tonight. Amen. This is the house of God. We're family. Amen. We look so much alike, only our daddy can tell us apart. Amen. Aren't you glad you're part of the family of God? Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's the greatest family there is. Amen. If you're a guest here tonight, we welcome you to Believer's Church. We're so glad that you're here. I will say we are having uh, some uh, sound issues we've been working on. If, it's, if it gets a little too quiet, we're trying to fix that. If it gets too loud, we're trying to fix that. Uh, we're trying to get a, a sound technician in to uh, to do some settings, but we haven't been having much luck with that. But uh, just please, please be patient with us. Amen. We'll get it all under control eventually. Amen. Praise God. I want to turn to the word of the Lord this evening to Hebrews chapter 10. I want to remind you as you're, you're turning tonight that uh, if you are a regular here at Believer's Church on Sundays, if you could park in the in the big lot, the fenced-in lot over here, and make room for new people. We would appreciate that. And I know some of you are already doing that, so we're thankful. And uh, it's good to see new people getting involved in the sound booth and whatnot on Sundays and video cameras, um, people getting involved in the work of God. That's, uh, that's a good thing. That's a sign of a healthy church when people are getting involved. Amen. amen. Can I get three amens? Amen. All right, there, that was a little better. Praise the Lord. So we're going to go to the word of the Lord, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 this evening. And it says this, and I'm reading from the, the New King James Version for our uh, newer converts. Uh, believe me, I've checked it up with the King James Version to make sure it says the same thing, and it does. Hebrews 10 and 1, for the law having a shadow. Everybody say a shadow. shadow. 
I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to do a little teaching, a little preaching, a little screeching. Uh, <clears throat> the Old Testament, so many times, and I said this just recently, so many people say that there's nothing to be learned from the Old Testament. Uh, I want you to understand that that is not true. That you, I've heard people say, you can throw the Old Testament right out. We don't need it at all. Not so. We need the Old Testament because the Old Testament, everybody say, is a shadow. It's a shadow. Even the law, the Ten Commandments, and then the Jewish people turned them into 613 different laws. But the, the law that God gave us was a shadow. Everybody say shadow. Come on, Brother John. Come up here and give me some backup. I've seen you come in. No rest for you tonight. Uh, <clears throat> It's a shadow. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. So since the time of Adam and Eve, when they committed sin in the garden, God uh, uh, did the first animal sacrifice when he killed innocent animals and made clothing to cover their shame. From that time on, I put it this way, Sin got a taste for blood, and it was a taste that could never be, a thirst that could never be quenched from, from that time on. And so yearly, they would have to make sacrifices, and those sacrifices would never deal with the sin. It would just roll them ahead year by year. And so you were kind of just putting your sin on credit. Your salvation was on credit. It was only good for a year, and you rolled it ahead. Having a shadow for the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect. For then would they have not ceased to be offered. We wouldn't have to do them if they, if they had the power to, to make everybody perfect. We wouldn't have to offer any more sacrifices. For the worshipers, once purified, would have no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. The grace ran out. The mercy ran out every year. And they would have to offer a new sacrifice. You're with me so far. For it is not possible. Tell your neighbor, it's not possible. That the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Therefore, when he... Oh, wow, my, I'm getting ready to preach already. Everybody say, when he, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body, everybody say a body, but a body you have prepared for me. I want to preach to you, teach to you this evening, the body of Christ. Would you say that out loud, the body of Christ. Lord, I'm going into a deep subject tonight, and I, I'm only going to scratch the surface. But I pray that you would help me. Help me to teach and preach with the anointing. Help the people of God hear your voice, hear your word, understand it. Let a spirit of illumination and revelation just settle on this congregation. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. The body of Christ. The, the, the sin issue, the sin question had to be dealt with once and for all. No more rolling it ahead. No more yearly sacrifices to just put, a, put it on pause. To put it on hold until the next sacrifice. But God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with the sin issue once and for all. I am going to take care of sin. And so he says this, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body have you prepared for me. If you're going to understand the work of the church, the power and the authority of the church, you have to understand the incarnation. Everybody say the incarnation. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to tell you what it is in just a minute. You cannot understand the church, the power of the church, the authority of the church, the work of the church, unless you understand the incarnation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. I just want a ministry. Good, you've got one. The ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of bringing people into right relationship with God belongs to every believer. Somebody say, I have a ministry. That is that God, are you ready? Buckle up. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing their trespasses to them and has has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ as though God were pleading through us. Isn't that something? God is pleading through us to this world, to this generation. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I read all that to tell you and and to really just point out the scripture that's in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 19. That is that God was in Christ. I want you to know Jesus Christ was not just a good man. He was not just a good teacher. He was not just a rabbi. He was not just a a wise person. But Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh to come and dwell among us and pay the price for our sin. That, my friend, is the incarnation. God put on flesh. He left the throne room, got off of his throne, hushed the angels from singing, and said, I'm going down there, and I'm going to buy back my creation, who Satan has stolen. Oh, my, my, my. Satan has stolen from me, and God wrapped himself in humanity and dwelt among us. He became like us that we could become like him Woo! if that don't get you excited your ex- excitation is broken amen God wrapped himself in flesh dwelt among us that God was in Christ why reconciling the world can you imagine the God of the universe who spoke. Reading something this, this past, about the, past week about the Big Bang Theory. And uh, I, I'm a big believer in the Big Bang Theory. Because I believe God said it and bang, it happened. <laughs> and uh, can you imagine the God who spoke worlds into existence? Sp- them spoke and there was the sun the moon the stars the earth spoke and there was light let there be light and there was light (laughs) the darkness receded he told the waters how far to come and said no no further than that he divided the lands he spoke and there were trees spoke and there were animals he spoke and everything that was uh, amen he created with his spoken word and then in the very dirt that he created by his spoken word he leaves the splendor of heaven gets down on his hands and knees and begins to form out a silly looking creature called humans I say that we are silly looking but we were made in the image of God in his image, he created us. And that's what, oh Lord, help me out. I can tell I'm not going to get far tonight. And this is why the devil has tried to mess up the human race. Amen. And that's why we're fighting the demons we're fighting today. And that's why people are so confused today. They don't know who they are, what they are, even how many they are. Bless God, have mercy. 
Why? Because you are created in God's image and Satan is trying to destroy the image of God that you carry around with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When Lucifer looks at you, he sees your daddy and he hates the human race because we bear in our bodies, body, mind, soul, and spirit, the resemblance of God. And so he tried to destroy us. And so God got down. You've heard me preach this, most of you. He got down into the dust of the ground. He created mankind and what separates us. Now, I'm not here to hurt your feelings. I was talking to an old farmer one day. He said, oh, he said, I, he said, I really hate, Sister Giselle, I really hate killing my cows. He said, because I named them. And they have their own personalities. And if there's any animal lovers here, I love them too. They're great with ketchup and mustard. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, he gave us dominion, I'll remind you, over all the cattle of the field. Woo, don't get me going. I'll, com- I'll convert all you vegans. <laughs> Woo! And so the farmer said, but I know that when I get to heaven, all my cows are going to be there because their souls live on. Hate to burst your bubble, but there's a difference between cows and you in case you haven't noticed. And there's a difference between monkeys and you and apes and you because God spoke and there were cows. God spoke and there were monkeys. God spoke and there were apes. But he got down in the dust and created you and I in his own image. And then he did something with us that he didn't do with any other creation. He breathed the breath of God into mankind. And the word of God declares, man became a living soul. Oh, somebody say, I've got a soul. I'm a living soul. This body may die, but my soul is going to live on through all eternity. Oh, Lord. Told you we're going deep. And so, we were made in the image of God. And God, to redeem us, wrapped himself in flesh. I want to... I gotta, I gotta try and hurry. I wanna bring some more of these scriptures out to you. Go to John 1 and 1. In the beginning. Say the beginning. That's a good place to start, isn't it? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, hallelujah, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light. Uh Uh-oh. He was not that light. But he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. Mm. Can I say the world still does not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, oh, that's you and I, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Listen to me now. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hold on, we're going somewhere. And dwelt among us. Colossians 2, 6. 
As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and build it up, and establish in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy. Oh Lord, come on church. Through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the word, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is not Jehovah Junior. He is the fullness of God in bodily form. (laughs) For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you, say me, You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. I'm giving you a lot of scripture tonight because I I want this to be very, I want you to know this is the word of God. This is not my opinion. This is not Pastor Bustard's uh, uh, pet uh, doctrine. This is straight from the word of God. Philippians 2 5, let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. I'm going somewhere. But he made of himself no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of what? Man, you and I. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those things in heaven and those things on the earth and those things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I come to tell you today, Jesus was God in the flesh. Everybody say God in the flesh. He was God in the flesh. You have to understand that. All the fullness of God, the fullness of the Godhead was in Him, what? Bodily. Mm. Bodily. The, The Word put on flesh and dwelt among us. Keep going, John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Oh Lord, I wish we could get that. We've got to stop expecting the world to live like the church. The world is not going to live like the church. The world is not going to live righteous. The world is not going to live holy. That's why there's a church. That's why there's an ecclesia. And that we are commissioned to pull them out of the very flames of hell into, amen, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But we cannot expect the world to hold the standard of the church. We are a separate people. We are a chosen, oh my Lord, help me now. A chosen, a royal priest. We are different and ought to be different. Oh Lord, help me, help me, help me. And I'll pray the Father, he'll give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you. And I like the next phrase. And will be in you. He said right now I'm just walking with you. You can see me. I'm talking to you. But I'm going away. That where I am. (laughs) You may be also. But there is another helper coming called the Holy Ghost. And then in the very next scripture, he says, I will come to you. The God in the flesh. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm I'm ready to get happy. The God who appeared in the flesh now inhabits flesh. (laughs) 
Now, I want to make it very clear tonight. I do not embrace the doctrine of little gods. We are not all little gods. There's a doctrine out there that said because we have the Holy Ghost, we're little gods. We are not little gods. Nobody's going to worship you. Get over it. Nobody's going to worship me. Not going to happen. We are not little gods, but we all have God in us. If you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Comforter living inside of you. And I'll tell you why. It wasn't just so you could have goosebumps. It wasn't so you could huck a buck. It wasn't so you could just speak in tongues, although that's important. But because Jesus said, I'm leaving. This flesh that I put on, the work of this flesh is done. I was crucified. I shed my blood. I redeemed mankind. Now I'm going up, but I am going going to pour out my spirit in you so there will still be the body of Christ in the world although this body oh, this body that you've seen me in is going away but I'm going to always have some flesh on the earth Now, don't you realize how important the church is? Uh, How important this thing? Don't you get how important you are to the kingdom of God tonight? I go on. We got to go on. He said, I will not leave you orphans, John 14, 18. I will come to you a little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. And that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. You talk about oneness, being together, unity. He who, uh, who, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Luke 24, 46, and he said on them, Jesus is still talking. Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance, oh, anybody still believe in that? That repentance and remission of sins, the washing, the cleansing of sins, should be preached in his name to all nations uh, beginning at Jerusalem and you are witnesses of, of these things behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high why is this important why is this necessary because God has intended from this point on to have a body in the earth. Listen to me now. Praise the Lord. In Jesus dwells all the fullness of God, the power of God, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God, the dunamis of God, the authority of God. And he said, I want you to go tarry at Jerusalem because I'm going away. This body is going up. But there's going to be a new body in the earth. And it's going to be full of all God's power and all God's authority. And all of his dominion and his righteousness and his holiness. It's not going to be in one human body, but it's going to be in thousands and even millions of bodies around the earth. Millions of individuals, but one body of Christ in the earth. Somebody say, I'm part of that body. Somebody say, I'm part of the body. I'm not just part of of an assembly or congregation. I am part of the body of Christ. 
full of his glory, full of his power, full of his anointing, full of his authority and unction, full of the dunamis power of God. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon God, putting himself in his church, which becomes his body in the earth. Are you, are you with me? Are you understanding me tonight? Next one of you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts and to the end of the earth. Acts 2, 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared on them cloven tongues or divided tongues as a fire, and set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That word utterance simply means ability. God filled them with His Spirit. And then He said, now my body is back in the earth. And through the centuries, they've tried to stamp it out. They have crucified Christians on the narrow, used to put them on poles and light them on fire in his in his gardens as, as, as candles. Amen. They were, Christians have been tortured. Christians have been jailed. Christians have been put in prison. Amen. Christians have been arrested even in our own country. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastors have been thrown in jail even in our own country of Canada. Whoever thought they would live the day to see that, but we've seen it here in our own country. Churches have been locked down. Amen. I, I, I'm not going to get into it all. Amen. But I, I want you to know there is more, there's more to it than what the eye see. Amen. There is a kingdom of darkness who said, I'm going to silence the church. I'm going to silence the preacher. But devil, you ought to know by now, you can't stomp us out. You can't put out our fire. You can't silence our voice. You can't kill us all dead. Amen. There will always be the 7,000 who have never bowed their knee to Baal. There will always be the church. God's always going to have a people. His body will remain in the earth until the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And he will say, come out of her, my people. Woo! I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Luke 10, 90. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you why? because we are the body of Christ in the earth Romans 12 3 for I say through the grace given to me the, to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith for as we have many members in one body but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given us, let us use them. If prophecy, let's prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. Or he who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I want to keep reading because this is good. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor. Giving preference to one another. Uh-oh. That'll solve a lot of problems not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, and be the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do, do not be wise in your own opinion, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. 
Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I read that to you because that's what the body of Christ ought to look like in the earth today. Lord, help me. Will you give me 10 more minutes? Give me 10 more minutes. Raise your hand. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80... All right, we're good. First Corinthians 12 and 12. For as the body is one and has many members, the body is one and has many members, but all the members have that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. He's one. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Is the spirit of God necessary? Yeah. So also is Christ, for by one spirit you are all baptized in one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. I love that, because there's no black church, white church, Asian church, Filipino church, native church, rich church, poor church. There's only one church. It's a blood-bought church. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, am I not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, then where would the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. You're where God wants you. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather than those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on those we bestow greater honor, and our presentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, given, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it. That there should be no schism in the body, no division. That the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that awesome? But isn't that an awesome responsibility as well? You are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles, gifts of healing, helps, administration, varieties of, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all uh, have the gift of tongues? Do all interpret but earnestly desire the best gifts? And I yet I show you a more excellent way. He said, I've got my body in the earth. And when my body acts the way it ought to act and functions the way it ought to function, there is no stopping the body of Christ in this generation. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I'm trying to bring this to a close. I really am. Ephesians 1.15, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, 
which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. The right hand is symbolic of the authority of God far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come and put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. I'm going to skip some of this. I have... Ephesians 5, 21, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourish and cherish it, just as the Lord does the church. I want you to know right now, God does not hate the church. This church is his body, and he loves his body, and he'll protect his body, and he'll stand up for his body. Amen. Stay in the church, and God himself will be your defender and your protector. Colossians 1, 15, he is the image. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or power. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all the things he may have the preeminence. All the glory that comes through the church belongs to him. Would you stand with me as I try to close this thing? Luke 4, 18, you've heard me read this so many times, but I hope it becomes more important to you tonight now that you know who we are and what we represent. Jesus said this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty those who are approved to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That was the commission. That was the mission of Jesus. God manifested in the flesh in the earth. And I submit to you tonight that his body that is in the earth, the church, carries the same commission. I want you to repeat after me. Would you do this? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's why you're here. That's your reason for living. That's your goal in life. That's why you're alive. That's your purpose in this world. You are the body of Christ in the earth. People say, Pastor, I just don't know why I'm here. I just told you why you're here. I just don't know what my purpose in life is. I just told you what your purpose in life is. Don't you let the devil question it one more second in your life. If you're a child of God, you are the body of Christ. You are the mouthpiece of Christ. The heart, the hands, the feet of Christ in this world to this generation. Mark 16, 15, he said, go in all the world and preach the gospel every creature he who believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that does not believe will be condemned and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name will they cast out devils they'll speak with new tongues they'll take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing will not by no means, no means hurt them and they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover his body is still in the earth. Would you bow your head and close your eyes with me in this house of God right now? Because there is somebody under the sound of my voice. You walked into this service tonight wondering why you were even alive. Wondering why God has even spared you. What your purpose was. You just have felt like you've just been floating along 
bouncing from one place to another. But God has sent this pastor in here tonight with the voice of the Holy Ghost to tell you who you are and why you're here. You, are, you may be the only Jesus somebody will ever see. You may be the only Bible somebody will ever read. Your hands may be the only healing hands they encounter. Your testimony may be the only saving story they ever hear. God's body is still in the earth. He said, you've prepared a body for me, yeah. He put on a human, bo human body, but when he was done with that body, there was another body prepared called the church. And while the world has turned against us and Christianity is no longer a popular thing, the body of Christ will prevail. And there will be a revival and there will be a move of God. And I'll tell you, Believer's Church, when we're going to impact this city of ours is when we know who we are and we realize I'm part of God's body in the city of Winnipeg. And what I do makes a difference. Do you understand now why the devil fights you the way he fights you? Why he hates you the way he hates you? why he wars against you the way he does, why he, he wars against your mind and your emotions. When he sees you, he sees the body of Christ. I tried to crucify it on a hill called Calvary, but everywhere I look, I see his body. service out and I'm going to have them play. I want everybody who will just to come and stand around the front of this church with me right now. I want to pray over you. Every child of God, every, maybe you haven't even made a start yet. Come. Because you're going to walk out of this building tonight and you're going to go out into a world that's hurting and lost and dying. And they need to see the Jesus in you. They need to see the body of Christ in 2022 alive and well, full of power, <laughs> full of glory. Come on. His body's not a sick body. <laughs> it's not a weak body. It's not a dying body. His body is alive and well. My God, I feel the power. Would you just raise your hand and would you just talk to him right now? I feel the presence of God in this service right now. Come on, just talk. Lord, I want to be your body in the earth. That's it. Tears are already flowing in this hall. I think some of you are catching what God is trying to say to us in this house tonight. God, I want to be your body in the earth. I want to be the body of Christ to this generation. God, I want to take the gospel to my family. Lord, to my neighbors. God, I want to see lives changed by the power of your name. I want the blood of Jesus to follow me. I want there to be a trail of blood everywhere I go. Healing blood, cleansing blood, delivering blood, saving blood. Oh, God, how I feel you, Jesus. Hallelujah, my God, I feel like something, something's getting ready to activate in somebody's life. I speak that over your life. I speak Holy Ghost activation. I speak activation to giftings, my Lord, I feel that. Yeah, 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 yeah. To giftings, to talents. Somebody who thought I could never testify. You're going to testify. Oh, I feel that. You're going to tell your story. And people are going to know the Lord because of what... Oh, because of what you said, God is doing something. God is doing something on this Wednesday night in this altar right now. Oh God, oh God, let us be the body of Christ in 2022. Would you breathe on us again? Would you let fresh fire, Lord, 
fresh wind. Yo, God, come into this service right now. A mighty rushing wind. Fill this altar. Baptize us again with Holy Ghost and fire. Baptize us again with passion for the lost. Baptize us again with fresh anointing, oh God. Fresh zeal, fresh authority, fresh power. Activate giftings, activate testimonies, activate the gifts of the Spirit in your body. Oh God. Oh, something is stirring in this house. Hallelujah. God didn't save you just to be a paperweight. God didn't save you just to fill a pew. God didn't pull you out of sin. Amen. Just for you to say, I'm saved. But what God did in your life, He did it to place you in the body, to give you a function, to give you a job to do. You might not be the eye, but maybe you're the hand. Maybe you're the thumb. Maybe you're the fear. But whatever place God has put you, do it with all your might. My God, let fresh energy come to your body tonight. Let fresh strength come to your body tonight. Oh, Holy Ghost of God. Hallelujah. Fresh unction. My God, I say a fresh word is coming into somebody's mouth right now. Hallelujah. My God, it's happening. There's a stirring. The tire this is lifting off of you hey God is restoring you again he's restoring you again oh would you find somebody just to pray with right now find somebody to lay your hand on find somebody to put your arm around if it's appropriate find somebody to take by the hand come on let's let the body minister to itself let the body let the body of Christ wake up in this church. <laughs> oh, let there be an awakening tonight. Whoa, Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My Lord, I feel you. I feel something stirring in this house. I feel something stirring in the realm of the spirit. The devil has told you you're a nobody and a nothing. You're a mistake. You're a failure. You're garbage. He's told you you're too young. You're too old. You're too sick. You're too poor. But I come to tell you, in the body of Christ, you are more than enough. Yeah, you are more. You are empowered. You are anointed. You are equipped. Oh, Holy Ghost, have your way. Hallelujah. 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 That's all right. Find two or three people to pray with. God is moving. God is moving in the re, in the tail end of this service tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I tell you, some of you are going to prophesy. My God. Hallelujah. I tell you, you're going to dream dreams again. Everything the devil has stolen from you, God is fixing to give it all back to you. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. He's putting his word in your heart and then he's going to put it in your mouth. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. That heart of stone, he's going to fill it and it's going to become a heart of flesh. And your heart is going to be filled with love. And God's going to give you a testimony. My God, I'm prophesying to somebody in this house right now. There is heart surgery going on in somebody's life right now. Hey, hey. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm part of the body. I'm part of the body. I'm part of the body of Christ to this generation. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. God wrapped himself in flesh but now he wraps himself in his people he wraps himself in his church oh hallelujah I come to tell you God is still in the midst of the church in 2022 
in the book of Revelation when it was all winding down John said I saw the seven golden candlesticks and in the middle of the candlesticks was God the candlesticks represent the seven churches of the book of Revelation and I come to tell you when this thing wraps up you're going to find from the beginning to the end God has always been smack dab in the middle of his body smack dab in the middle of his people to get around this couple right now and pray. Come on, where's the body? Come on, Mike, come on. Come on, Jason, come on. Come on, where's the body? Where's the body? Come on. They want to be free. They want their life turned around. That's what the body's here for. That's what the body's here for. There's still power in the body. Counselors can't do. Do what programs can't do. 